Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, MATLAB Simulation. In this video, we go through some MATLAB codes used to compute the natural cubic spline. And these functions are provided to you so you can use them for your homework. But before using that, you need to take a look at these files and understand what each function is doing. So the first function provided to you is the one that called C splines. And it takes a T vector and Y another vector as its input, where T are the knots and Y are the corresponding values for the knots. So basically T and Y is your data set. And this function will compute all the ZIs for you. So you might want to compare this algorithm with the algorithms we derived earlier for natural cubic spline. So basically you have to set up this linear system of equations for Z, which will be a tri-diagonal matrix system. So the way to represent a tri-diagonal matrix would be the following. Since most of the elements in my matrix will be zero, I will not generate a whole matrix for it. I would actually use three vectors to denote the diagonal, the upper diagonal, and the lower diagonal. And to make it even easier, because it's a symmetric matrix, I actually need only two vectors, one for the diagonal and one for both up and lower diagonal. Okay, so after finding out the length of the vector t, which will be the total number of knots, and we initialize some space for further use, we initialize z to be the same size, and h, one less, and b, one less, and the u vector and the v vector as well. And you see h will be the interval um, length for each interval from ti to ti plus 1. So we use this shorthand. This is MATLAB vector value function. So if you don't understand what this is doing, and you need to go to the tutorial of MATLAB to make sure you know. The b here will be the vector for all those bi's in our algorithm. And then the u will be the diagonal of my matrix. And this v here is actually the right-hand side vector. Okay? And since the um, upper and lower diagonal is simply h, I don't need to generate a new vector. I will simply use h here. So from here to here actually is a Gaussian elimination to compute the linear system using this is the um, forward elimination and this is the backward substitution. You can leave it there like it is. Later on we will learn numerical linear algebra and we'll go into details. So what the program returned to you is a vector of z which contains all the s double primes at the ti's. Once these zi's are computed I can use them to find my spline function s. So this function c spline eval will do the following. You send in your data set, which is in t and y, and you send in the z value, which is computed by the c spline function, and then you also send in the x value, and this is the value where you would evaluate your function S. So the spline function will be evaluated at S, and that value will be stored in this variable S and as the output of your code. So I want you to pay attention to this little piece of code. What does it do is exactly that for a given X, this will find you the index I such that my X will lie in the interval exactly between ti and ti plus 1. So this piece of information is important to know because I need to know which si 
to use to compute to evaluate okay and then what's written here is exactly the expression to compute si of x so all these is to evaluate the si of x that long expression now coded in matlab now let's take a look at how we can use those two functions so let's say i have four knots t given like this 0 0.9 1 1.3 1.9 2.1 and then i have a y vector given the same length so i can send my data set in t and y into the c spline function and the function will compute the z which will be the double derivative so since I have four knots here, so the z will be a vector of the same length, and then you see that the first z is zero and the last z is zero. This is the condition for the natural cubic spline, right? The first and last, second row of the zero. And then we can send in the t and the y and the z into the c spline eval function, and the last input variable is the point x where you want to evaluate it. So let's say I want to find out what is the value for my c spline when x equals to 1.5. So you put in 1.5 and you get the answer. It's 1.5810. So this is how to get the value for one point. And let's take a look at um, the output of a actual um, cubic spline versus a polynomial interpolation for the same data set. So here in this graph, the data set is marked with all these x, 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 x. These are my data sets, okay? And uh, the green line, the green curve here represents the plot, the graph for the polynomial interpolation. And the, the red curve here is the natural cubic spline. So as you can see clearly with your eyes, this green one has bending up and down. It is not smooth at all near the two endpoints, while the natural cubic spline goes through your interpolating points in such a nice and smooth way. It's most pleasant for the human eyes to look at. And that's exactly the reason why we abandoned polynomial interpolation of high order, and we went to piecewise polynomial interpolation. Okay, thank you for watching.